Delighted to say I'm joined by 2013 All-Ireland winning captain with Clare, Pat Donnellan. Pat, the first thing that springs to mind when I was just looking over the history of Clare is that only three men ever have lifted the All-Ireland for the county. Ambrose Power, yourself and Anthony Daly. That's, that's, that, you must feel pretty good about yourself when you think of that. Yeah, no, it is. Sure, look, it's it's a complete honour, we'll say. Yeah, Ambi Power, Dalo and, and myself. So they're, you know, look, you kind of know, I suppose, regardless of what else happens, that um that your name is probably written down the history books which, in a selfish way, which is great, you know, and it kind of, um the fact there's only a few people that have actually done it, I suppose it just brings home, you know, how, how special it is, how, you know, what seldom is beautiful, I suppose. And, you know, we've we've had a few, a few of those lucky days, hopefully, or we're clear so far, but, um, yeah, really, really, I suppose, special day for me personally, for my family, for, for everyone in my club, exactly. And, uh, yeah, something to treasure, I suppose, you know, and something to, when I'm old and old and grey, or older and greyer, I suppose, than I am now, I'll, I'll always be able to look back on anyway, so, yeah. Because, like, we'll build up to, to the All-Ireland, of course, in, in 2013, but just where your career started out, I, I presume it was Anthony Daly who called you up um, as soon as you made your debut in 2006, was it? Yeah, I was. Dalo was, was the manager at the time, so I was on, I had one year in with Dalo, um, before he left, and I, I was, I think I was very lucky to be honest. I think it kind of, in, in one sense, it kind of made me in a way because I, I was lucky enough at that time when I came onto the panel. Fitzy was still there, the Lohans were still there, Shawnee Mack, um, you had Colin Lynch, you had a load of the guys, I suppose, that would have been there from from 10, 15 years ago. The guys I would have grown up with, um, you know, I made my debut in a league game with Fitzy and goals, Shawnee Mack beside me, Brian Lohan, you know, like stuff that I, I literally would have grown up watching those guys as my heroes and I got to line out with them, got to see how they handled themselves in training, the way they carried themselves, the way they prepared, the way they cared about everything. Um, and I think it, it kind of gave me a great feel, I suppose. I would have come through underage with Clare winning basically nothing, you know, um, and coming into a team like that and a group like that, it kind of immediately brought you up a few gears and up a few steps and kind of you kind of knew really what you were getting into and you had to you know you had to train the way they trained you had to prepare the way they trained you had to have the same attitude as them and I think it kind of gave me a good gave me a good stand and I suppose in the years to come as to what what was expected uh, at that level and and I suppose what I would have strived to try and achieve in myself afterwards once once that, that kind of generation had gone. As a young guy coming in and you know I presume you would have been at the 95 and 97 All-Irelands and all that generation did did you come in sort of half fearful of what this was going to be like overawed, thinking um, that, you know, how do you walk into a dressing room with Brian Law and Shawnee Mack, these massive, massive personalities, and you're probably this young lad, probably afraid to say boo. Yeah, no, I was, I suppose, look, I, I was I was young as well in in a way, but look, I was, I was you know, 2006, I was 21 that year, so I wasn't, I wasn't coming in as a 17 or 18 year old, so at the same time, you know, I had a couple of years, clear 21s, um, Coming through underage, Jim McInerney, Fergie too, he would have been over as a minor. Mike Mack would have been our under-21 manager. So I had a, I suppose we would have had um, an appreciation, I suppose, and we would have had, a, I suppose, an experience of lads that were involved at that time and lads that had had success and been around successful teams. So we kind of knew, in a way, what we were getting into, but it was just brilliant. It was Look, I was like a, a kid in a candy store, as they'd say, coming in, you know, with all my heroes around, the people I, I literally would have grown up watching TV. You know, I was... 10 and 95, 12 and 97, so, you know, Shawnee Mack coming to the school, Dalo coming to the schools, coming to our summer camps, you know, club club mate of mine, PJ O'Connell Fingers, who was on the team, you know, they were all the lads I would have seen, you know, and then coming into a panel with those kind of guys, it was brilliant, like, yeah, I would have been nervous at the start, but they were all such grounded lads and really, really just... They were delighted, I suppose, in a way to see young lads like myself coming in because it gave them a pep, something I didn't realise then maybe until I was older myself, that, you know, you you love to see new guys coming in that have that grow for the game, that have that enthusiasm, that have that, that just that carefree attitude that they just couldn't care less. They just want to train hard, work hard and, and kind of soak up everything that comes into them. So I was nervous, but it kind of goes fairly quickly because they take you on immediately and look, you're in drills then with lads, you know, you're in tackle bags with them, you're, you know, you're getting hit, you're... There was a challenge game, I remember one day, uh, and I ended up being midfield against Colin Lynch, and uh, he, he, look, Colin, Colin trained the way he played, you know, the way, Colin was, was the same man regardless, you know, if you met him down the road, he was, he was, um, he was as honest as they had come, and whatever happened on the field stayed on the field, and he went down to rise the ball, and I came in just to flick it, and I just caught him on the hand late, and like, look, if I did, he just came back, and I just got the hurley straight across me, like, you know, but the play just carried on, ball carried on. 
and afterwards he'd come over and he'd just give you a clap on the back and that was it. You know, it was just, it was a great environment to come into, to be honest. You know, and then the next day, if you got hit in the game, you know, he'd be the first man in or Lohan would be in and just, it was, they were, they were, they were, I was lucky. I think I was really, really lucky to have come in at that time um, to, to still get the best out of them at, at the age they were at um, and, and then have other lads then in the team, the likes of Tony Griffin, Tony Carmody, Brian O'Connell, all other strong personalities that would have been a couple of years older than me that kind of, you know, gave that gap, I suppose, in the, in, in the time, you know, when, when some of the older lads had left, like Sparrow and Delo. Was there any part of you thinking that maybe I've caught these lads past their peak and the time for all, clear? And I know in 2006 he pushed Cork so close when Cork yeah. were going for the three in a row, pushed them so close in that semi final. Was there any part of you that at the time or even looking back now thinks, right, that team was probably past its best and we were entering transition? I, I don't think so, really, no, because it. I don't know. Look, I suppose back then as well too, it was different. There was there probably was a lot more of a of an emphasis, or there probably was a lot more of um of a I suppose a, an appreciation for experience. You know, whereas nowadays, you know, it, there isn't really the same um, attitude, or there isn't really the same confidence kind of associated with experience. It's you're either able to do it, you have the legs, or you don't. Whereas back then, you know, having the likes of Brian Lohan, fullback, Shawnee Mack, centre back. Con Lynch midfield, even though they were in their thirties or, or, or pushing on a bit, it didn't really matter. They still had the same experience. You know, they probably would have liked to have been a bit younger. But when I came into the team, then we would have been doing mile runs um, around Flannans for most of the winter. Like Shawnee McMahon would have been passing people out on those. But these lads were still they were animal fit. They really looked after themselves. And then again, as I probably would have found out myself, you know, when you come into the panel as a young lad, you can do whatever you want. You can. Within reason, you can probably eat, do whatever you want, and just your body, your metabolism, you know, helps you along the way. But when you get into the later years, you have to look after yourself so much. You know, you really, really take, um, I suppose, mind or take heed of your your sleep, your diet, you know, your your exercise, your stretching, everything at home. And those lads were, were doing that to the nth degree. So they were still in, in fantastic shape when I came in. And when you see them training and playing up close, you kind of know what you're going to get from them on the day, you know. And look, they... I had seen it in 2005 before I came in, and then in 2006. Look, there probably was, there probably was, you know, a kind of a feeling that look, we all need to squeeze the most out of we can out of the group, the older lads, Dalo all together because they knew that they were on the way out. But I, I don't think that was a, I, I don't think it was with a sense that they were clinging on. It was more just look, we have a couple of years here now where we could win something, and let's just really knock it down and try and do it. I, I think of that team around 06 so you've Anthony Daly as manager all those big names that you've talked about and I'm trying to imagine what was it like in terms of those guys uh, speaking in the dressing room I'd imagine you had some unbelievable speeches given yeah we did I suppose in, in a way but they were they, it's like it's like any kind of good teams you're involved in a lot of the time you don't there isn't really a need for kind of hoorah speeches and you know you you can tire yourself out very quickly if it's a case well Shawnee speaks and then Lohan and then Fitzy and then Frank and then Colin and by the time you go out in the field you're drained from it so they they knew they'd been around and you know the week before training was kind of helter skelter or two weeks before maybe the week before was kind of just winding down um kind of trying to tighten in on a few points trying to make sure that we were really really prepared and ready for the game but there wasn't really um that kind of a sense. I think these these guys just really knew that they were capable of delivering, that they had delivered previously, and it was just a case of going out in the field and trying to trying to make sure that they uh, they showed it as well as they could. Um, definitely, look when when Brian Lohan or when Shani Mack or Con Lynch or any of them stand up in the dressing room, the hairs will be on the back of your neck. But I think they were very good at finding the balance between it too, and Dalo especially. Look, there's no better man than Dalo to give a speech and and to to rise lads if you need they need to be risen, you know and you know, he's so well connected to Clare and the traditions and he speaks so highly of him and you can tell the minute he opens his mouth that it's it's from a place of, of sincerity. It's not just being being um being trawled out. So they were very good at kind of mixing that and making sure that there was tradition, there was the there was the I suppose the the discipline with that as well. Um the anger when it needed to be angry, but at the same time making sure that, you know, on the field was where everyone was going to be judged and making sure that you weren't trying to win the game the week before and that you were uh, you were you were drained almost before you came in i wasn't actually planning on asking this but now that you mentioned daily in 2012 when he brought dublin down to that for that famous qualifier in cusick park and what walked the dubs down through the ennis and all that kind of stuff was there any part you kind of bothered by this clear legend bringing another team to, uh, to town 
Do you know what? Not really, to be honest. Now, no one. I look. I would have an awful graph for Dale always had. He he gave me my first start with Clare. He was a hero of mine growing up. I I think he's one of those fellas that you could never really accuse of that, you know, because you know that wherever he comes from, wherever he goes, he's going to do it with 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 real honesty, and he's not going to be doing it, you know, to kind of sow it into the Clare lads or sow it into lads he would have played with before. No, look, he's a winner. He's a winner, and he would have wanted Dublin to beat us that day, absolutely. But you know, uh, it's weird. Look, with sport, sometimes there's people that could do things like that. There's fellas that could shout and roar in your face. And you you take it if you you know if you've an experience of those lads and you, you you'll take it a certain way. There'll be other lads where you might get a bit narky and you might kind of know that it's coming from a kind of a sneaky place maybe or or somewhere that you might like to give them a clip the next time you see them. But you would have a, a huge um a huge respect for most lads that you'd meet and most managers, coaches, etc. Because it's all, it all comes from an honest place. And winners are winners. Look and you know we know teams or we know managers, coaches move around counties nowadays. You know so there's no. There's no sense with look. He went to them now, so I'm not going to be be uh, see the best in him anymore. I'm going to try and cut him every every time I can, every time I see him. But uh, no, we w- I wouldn't have to be perfectly honest with you. I wouldn't have, and I don't even think we kind of use that as a motivation or anything like that. It's more just it's motivation enough, I suppose. If a team is coming to your home ground, you just kind of go down that route rather than trying to use every other little thing that that kind of might just muddy the waters a bit. What um what were the circumstances then surrounding the fact that you got dropped by Tony Considine for the 2007 season? Because you know you were only just starting out. It probably taught you the great years to come. Yeah, yeah. I, I look. I I came in. I suppose 2006. I, I, I was. I was. From my own point of view, I suppose 2006 for me was a year to settle in. I didn't play much. I played uh, one championship game. Or I came on in one championship game. Played a few league games, but it was always going to be a game or a, a kind of a. A year for me where I kind of just found my feet a bit and then the following year maybe tried to get my place push on a few more lads left uh, and things like that but when Tony Constantine came in um, I suppose there was a change of mood in that when when Dela was there um, he had brought me in so you kind of got the feeling that he saw something in you and that he wanted to get that out of you and that he knew that you know maybe you were a player for the future and all that but when a new manager comes in then it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a carte blanche for everybody. It's just look, there's there's forty, forty five lads here, you know. There was m- every kind of I suppose club player that was worth their salt at the time was brought in as well. So it was a real kind of uh, mishmash of everything, uh, and it was just look, you have to fight for your own corner. If you're worth it, you're worth it. If we think you're good enough, we'll keep you. And I just, I kind of got the feeling, to be honest, at the start that he, he, he. You get a feeling sometimes with managers that they just probably don't see, um, or they probably don't have. Have, have an interest in, in kind of giving you that start. And I don't mean that against him or anything like that, but like every manager is allowed to kind of uh, pick their own team, pick their own players if they don't think you're up to it, et cetera, et cetera. But he, he, there definitely was an interest, I suppose, at the time from that management team, um, I think in some players, uh, to bring him along. There was other, there was other people dropped beside me. Fitzy was, was dropped the same year. Um, obviously a bit more uh, controversial than a, than a young lad like me. Nobody really cared, but... Uh, I kind of knew from from the middle of that winter season. I kind of in my head, I was like, "Look, I think I could be in trouble here now." Um, I don't know if he has a reason to keep me. And I look, I tried my best. I tried to play well, but you know, playing challenge games against you know Tip down in Clan Mail in the middle of November. You know, if you don't play well down there, your year is probably gone. You might get one or two 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 preseason games to kind of chance yourself and. Uh, I knew I kind of saw it coming to be honest with you. Now I did. I was obviously devastated, uh, but I kind of saw it coming that I, I I could have been in trouble. And uh, yeah, that was kind of it. <laughs> and like, how did you take it? How did he? First of all, how did he say it to you? And then how did you take it? Was it this thing where I'll prove him wrong, or were you actually just a bit down on yourself? No, um, to be honest, it was very. I, I we came off the field in uh, out in Flannans one day. Um, and we kind of knew it was kind of building up to look lads uh, this week or next week uh, lads are going to be dropped uh, the panel is going to be picked so we kind of all knew it was coming or whatever uh, and we did a session in Flannans I remember one night and uh, we just went into the dressing room afterwards and he just said right this is the panel or he named the panel um, that was going to be staying on and then the lads that weren't and myself and a few more were in it um, Fitzy was gone at that stage actually but uh, there was a few more obviously dropped with it and that was it you just kind of that changed, picked up your gear, went out of the dressing room, went home, and uh, 
like I said, I kind of knew it was coming. I kind of did know it was coming. I knew I wasn't uh, one of his main lads, and you know, in training games there could have been um, extra backs or whatever. And I was still probably on the fringes of it at that time, even those games. So I was like, look, I know he's. Not, it'll be kind of a shot in the dark here for him to pick me now. I, um, so I saw it coming, but I was still, yeah, I still was devastated. I still, I really had really enjoyed the first year. You know, I'd been playing well under age twenty one before that to come up, and then um, when I got dropped, it was it was a killer. Uh, but like, just it happened when I was young. That's about the only good thing I could say. Um, went off to America for the year. Uh, well, for the for the summer, for three or four months in the summer, played hurling over there, loved it, um, and came back then again afterwards and just started again. And I got lucky enough. I got back in the panel the following year. Mike Mack was back as as manager. Mike that had been my manager twenty ones, and. Uh, Mike obviously had good time for me from 21s and he brought me back in and I just kind of started from there then again. And did, did you settle into the team pretty quickly? Like was it, once you got into that team, um, do you feel that you started to hit the ground running? Yeah, I did. I did, yeah. I kind of, well, I see, I'd been there, I think being there in 2006, even though I had missed the year, but I think being there in 2006, um, it helped me a lot. And I kind of went back then in 2008 as an, feeling like I was an experienced player. And I had been there before, even though I had been dropped the previous year, you know. So it's and that, that makes it easier when you come in. Then you know you're a little bit older. You kind of know what's coming. You know what's expected of you. Um, and I had known Mike obviously from from the twenty ones, and I knew what Mike was going to do with us. I knew the way training was going to be. I know the way the team was going to be handled and stuff like that. So you you kind of go right. This is, we know what's going on here. We'll all just row in together, get the work done. And uh, there's players there. There was there was a, a kind of a good crop coming in at that time as well. Um, are starting to come in, I suppose, at that time, and they kind of give it a, a bit of a new impetus as well. So there was, it was, it was a good time to go back in then, and yeah, I did, I did kind of settle in straight away. Then at that stage, kind of made my place wing back, and I kind of kept it really there around the half back line. Then we'll say with Mike and onwards afterwards. Because like if we jump on a couple of years then, and you know there was a few monster final appearances. I remember one day Colin Ryan hitting was it thirteen points more or less in his first year against yeah, Tip in a yeah. monster final. But if you jump on again to 2011, that was the year that I think Conor McGrath announced himself. He scored was it one or two goals against Tipperary down in Limerick. And I thought, OK, there's a decent Clare team coming here. But the season finished up for Sparrow in a 425 to 20 point loss to Galway in the qualifiers, if I remember correctly. Really yeah, yeah. dispiriting day. Do you remember that day? And, you know, like when you consider that two years on, you were all Ireland champions. I mean, you looked a fairly desperate team that day. Yeah, yeah, no, we were, we were. It was that was a horrible day, you know, and we were, we were murdered, to be honest, up there. Um, and it was just one of those days. I think, to be fair, look, they, there'll be days when teams get a run on you, but I think, I think, to be honest, what our, what our, what I would have seen when Fitzy came in afterwards was that we were doing a huge amount of training. We were doing a lot of things right. We were doing a lot of good things, a lot of honest lads in the team and stuff like that. But we, there was a level missing. There was a gear missing. And it was only when Fitzy came in, I think that we all kind of realised, you know, we we were never at this level before. We were never at this gear before. And when, you know, I would have gone out against teams in, in, in 09, 10, 11, 08 even as well, I suppose. And you you would have said, look, if things go right for us here in a day, we have a good chance. Um, But you needed everything to go right for you, you know, and you needed the... the you needed the other team not to have a brilliant day, I suppose. You know, we didn't have probably that level of quality at that time um, that we had in the latter years. Uh, but then, I suppose, in 2012, when, when Fitzy came in, you know, he, he brought in a bit more of everything. A lot of the same things we were doing, but every, every little piece, I suppose, that we did in terms of diet, s and the training intensity, um, our discipline, uh, the scheduling, all of that stuff just probably went up another level. So then when it came to championship, you know, you kind of almost felt immediately, even though the personnel were much of the same in 2012, you immediately felt, look, we're, we're a way better prepared team here. And going out in the field, I think that's, that, that's the best thing you can have as a team to know that you're, you're well prepared. Look, you can, you know, there, there'll be days when you're marking a fella and he's unmarkable. You know, there's not much you can do. As a back, I know a man is going to get X amount of points and, and off me per game unless, you know, Unless I'm in unbelievable form and I keep everybody scoreless every day, it's not going to happen. So you, there's a certain amount of givens that you give away before you start. But if you know that you're prepared every which way you can, well, you just go out and you just take it as it comes, and it gives you great confidence. And I think we had that then afterwards. Now, that's not to say that you know eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We we trained really hard. We prepared really well. Everybody think I think did as much as they could. 
but it just went up a level, I think, in fairness, when Fitzy came in and, and he brought that little bit extra. Um, and then after that, then we got that extra bit of quality with the younger lads that came through us. You, you, did you have Davy Fitz in LIT or have I that yeah, right? I, yeah, I, I had him for a year. Yeah, I went back into the Masters and I had him for a year. Um, so I would have, yeah, I would have had him for a, a year there, I suppose. Uh, um, so he would say much the same, I suppose. He would have been the same as he as he would have been with with Claire, but he he was good. Sure, he like he's a, he's a legend inside in LIT, you know, kind of brought him from nowhere back to that. But yeah, I had him for the year in two thousand and ten, I think. Yeah, two thousand ten. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard, I heard a little Dicky Bird told me that you had booked some holiday and then you were, you know, you were still play- just give me the story because you have it rather than me kind of mucking <laughs> yeah. it up. Yeah, no, well, uh, yeah, so I went back, yeah, it was 2010, I'm not really sure it was 2010, I went back um, to LIT just to do a Masters, and it was uh, it was a one-year Masters, it was um, it was fairly intense now, um, it was a small class, and it was something I really wanted to do, I really wanted it for my, my work life, we'll say, uh, and I really wanted to do it, really wanted to do it well, so I had no intention whatsoever of playing Fitzgibbon, playing Hurling inside, I was playing with Claire, I was doing the Masters, I was working away, and I was like, look, I'm... I played in, in UL before that for, for four or five years. I had enough of it, uh, uh, chopping and changing and kind of doing things. So anyway, look, I, I went into LIT and I was in there for the first couple of weeks and months and, and nobody had kind of said anything to me about hurling. And I was like, look, Grant, it's okay. But then um, Fitzy called me one day and he said, look, will you come in and meet me? And I said, look, I will, Grant, I'll come in and meet you. I knew he was going to ask me to play Fitzgibbon, but I was like, look, I don't, I've, I don't want to. I have no time. Thanks a million. Um, but in the meeting, he said, look, will you play... Uh, we're down a few lads. There was a couple of lads injured at the time, um, and they actually were down a good lot at the time. Uh, the, the panel wasn't as strong as it would have been in recent years. Um, so anyway, typically after a meeting with Fitzy, you kind of come out agreeing to it, even though you don't agree to it. Um, so I went back and I started playing back with him that year. But, I, but before I left the meeting, I said, look, Fitzy, I'll play. I'll, 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 I'll do what you want me to do. But I have a holiday booked, skiing holiday booked in February. I said, I've, I haven't never gone skiing. I've never booked a holiday in inter-county season. I've never run away, really, you know, anywhere in the last whatever. I said, I'm going this holiday regardless. I've arranged with, with, with Sparrow, who was the care manager at the time. And I said, I will not be around. So don't be thinking about me. And he said, look, he said, no problem. That's fine. That's fine. Thanks for, for playing the start. <laughs> sure, lo and behold, we went out that year. We With all the injuries and... We weren't expected to really do anything that year, but we, we went out in the first couple of games. We played in UIG in one game. I think we hammered them, and I was like, oh, God, we're going to, we're going to get to the final here now. I knew well we're going to get to the final. Uh, and, yeah, as luck would have it, then we we went we got to the final, which was great, to be honest with you. Um, and then then it came closer and closer to the, to the holiday and closer and closer to the Fitz weekend, and I was like, look, I, I'm not changing it. I started getting ticked in kind of myself, to be honest, uh, because I was like, look, I made the deal. I'll keep up my part of it, you keep up your part of it. And they tried to kind of, you know, in fairness, they tried, I suppose, to, to say, look, we'll, we'll sort you out after and we'll, we'll book a different one or we'll change the dates or do this or that. But I booked it with my friends and my family and stuff. So I, I, I kind of held my ground uh, and I ended up missing, missing the, the fifth weekend and they lost the final into UL that year. So uh, that's by a couple, couple of points or two points, I think, it's time. I'd say Davey was loving you for that. I can't believe he made you captain of Clare after that. Yeah, I know. That's that was that was the that was the funny thing about it. To be honest, a few few lads would have said it afterwards. Um, but Fitzy wouldn't like he he wouldn't really hold grudges like that either. Like you know that kind of way. Um, and at the same time, I told him. So I I really I suppose my conscience was clear. I kind of held up my part of it. And in fairness, I think they kind of knew by me when I was saying it. Um, that, that was it and they, and it was unexpected on their side too to be fair as well i think they just got on a run that year uh but look it was just a pity i do i do regret not being there to be honest after the way it was and especially uh the way it worked out because look winning if it's given would have been a great thing um i had played for a good few years in you well but we'd never really got got that close to it um and i would have liked to have had it but look it's weird sometimes when you're kind of in those things you know, you I suppose you don't have the, you don't reflect on them probably as much as you should, and then afterwards you kind of think of them and you say, "God, that was a bit weird. I did it." But at the time, it didn't feel weird at all. I was busy enough at work and with playing with Claire and doing the Masters. I kind of was like, "Look, I've enough on my plate here." So when you get to twenty thirteen and you start out the season with a defeat to to Cork, and I think Tony Kelly was held pretty much scoreless that day by Brian Murphy. 
there was no kind of sign of what was to come later in the year for him, even though we'd seen flashes of it in 2012. Yeah. Like Podge Collins yeah. played well that day, but probably not too many others. This this talk of this famous cup of tea up at Fitzy's house and a few biscuits, how realistic is it that that was kind of like the turning point for your season, that, you know, you trashed it all out and then you were able to reset and go again? Yeah, I'd, I'd look, I don't know. I don't know how how uh, significant that was, to be honest with you. Do you know, like you could do, if you're going into that deal, you could do 50 things. Do you know, a, a, a chat that a fella has in the dressing room someday, you know, um, some point some fella scores, a goal a fella scores. Like ev- everything kind of adds up, I think, to the end of the 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 end of the, the year, I think, to being important, obviously. Um, but how much impact that had, the only good thing I'd say about that is that we were all fairly low after it. And coming whether it was a cup of tea, whether it was a pint, whether it was a training session or a meeting on the road, whatever it was, I think we all kind of just came away from his house that day and we all just felt a bit better about ourselves. We were like, right, park what happened. We'll change a couple of things and we'll move on and we'll just try and make sure we get the best out of ourselves going forward. So that was the only the positive out of it, I suppose. Look, it kind of wasn't really a kind of a come to Jesus meeting or, you know, we didn't really change everything and anything, but uh, but it did serve its purpose, I think. And after that, we just kind of said, right, this is day one. and Because we had an easy enough win over Leash, and I think everyone would have expected that. But made heavy weather of it against the Wexford team. You know, it went to extra time and everything, and Wexford weren't exactly a heavy hitter at the time. Yeah. Now, did, could yeah. you like could you see it happening at that point? Were you even thinking All-Ireland? Oh, no. No, not at all. No, no, no. No, you wouldn't. Not even, not even close. You couldn't. You'd be mad to think it. Sure. You'd, be, you'd be a lunatic. Do you know, like, we had never won anything. Like, you know, we hadn't really come close to win anything. I'd played in a one-monster final. Uh, you know, and I know, you know, Fitzy was brilliant in terms of, you know, he'd, 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 he would make you believe you could win something. But in your heart of hearts, you were like, look, there has to be a pattern here. We, you know, we have to be more consistent. We have to... Um, you know, get our level of detail better. We have to make sure that our quality is better, our scoring rates, everything. So we, you still you still can break everything down and know that you're not just going to arrive on every day and, and score if if the if the patterns of that aren't there before. So um, the only thing was that we just we knew we were animal fit. We knew that we were really well prepared, and we we really did know there was players coming through, and that gave me confidence as an older player. I suppose I would have, you know, you know that in a team you need a little bit of everything and, and I could kind of see that those little bits were coming together. So that's what kind of gave me confidence. You know, we had the bit of experience, we had all the legs and then with those with those new younger lads, we had the quality. And yeah, Podge and Tony, you know, Assad, it's kind of regret. They weren't going to play well every day, but if you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lads of quality, you know, you don't need all of them to play well every day. You know, we see that with, with, with typical Kenny Cork now. You need one or two marquee forwards and you need everybody else kind of doing their job. And, um, and it'll kind of come together. And yeah, we, we did make hard work at Wexford. But again, we had no reason to be a consistent team back then. We hadn't anything won. We had a real, real blend of, of you know, I was experienced then, as in I had been around a panel, but I hadn't won anything, you know. So um, we had been around a lot of Monster Championship days and things like that. But the, the younger lads, even though they had won 21s and minors, it's still very different, you know, being in a senior senior team in Turles or in the Gaelic Grounds. Uh, you know, a couple of points up or a couple of points down, twenty minutes to go. That's that's really where you need your your, your kind of metal and you need the, the experience of years gone by to kind of drag you through. And look, we we won that day against Wexford, uh, and again everything kind of seemed to fall in place. We got a bit of a kick from that, and we just kind of kicked Did, on again. Like how heavy was the the training that you were doing with Davy Fitz? You know, all you hear about is is the Cratlow Woods. Was that the horror show that it's made out to be? It wasn't really, to be honest. No, it, it um, we probably didn't do it as much as people would have thought, and we I would have done that. Uh, look, Mike Mack was my manager. I would have done some, a lot of the same kind of physical training before that that the older Clare players would have done. We would have done the Hill and Shannon and Tully Glass that was kind of made famous. But I think, I think that was kind of getting to a stage then where slogan kind of stopped being relevant. Um. You know, slogan lads when you know twenty years ago when when guys came back from preseason with a bit of weight on, it served its purpose maybe because it it almost scared them into minding themselves. But you know, getting eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three year olds to run up and down hills all day, they'll do it. They'll uh, they'll do it for you and they'll do it gladly almost. You know, so it's it, it doesn't it steals the mind. Yeah, but the harder sessions we would have done would have been the on field sessions. Um, you know, he was very good at at, at, at tackling drills and things like that. Um. Um, and other sessions like that. Uh, Joe Connor, our S and C coach, uh, would have would have done an awful lot of um, 
was uh, Tabata sessions and kind of circuits and things like that. They were they were the harder sessions to be honest, um, and it, and and his hurling sessions in general were just intense. So if you did an hour, if you did an hour and a half, from the minute you stepped on the field to the minute you stepped off the field, you were just tuned in. You were on. Uh, Paul Kinnerk the same. Um, you know, it was the coaching element, I suppose, that was that was probably more full on. And then he probably, after that, you're, you know, we would have trained hard um, when I came onto the panel with Dalo and then Mike Mack. But you had a bit of downtime. But again, I suppose in 2012 when he came in, your downtime started to dwindle. You know, you were always doing something. You were you were taking much more notice of your of your nutrition. You were taking much more notice of your stretching. Um, you were doing, you know, your own core exercises at home. So you 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 gradually kind of an athlete that was training a lot to being a full-time athlete almost when you weren't working essentially when i think of the the 2013 quarter final against galway and thurless you know this was a galway team that had beaten kilkenny the year before drawn with them in an all Ireland final obviously lost the replay but everyone was expecting them to kick on to the next level now they didn't go well in leinster and got beaten well by uh, dublin i think in the leinster final but this was the, f- the first day that really stood out to me that you were playing sweeper and you swept in front of Joe Canning, and I don't think barely a ball got in there at all. So that was kind of, yeah. I'd say, that kind of announced that you are a serious contender, especially with Tip and Kilkenny struggling, and, and ultimately Kilkenny went out to Cork. So both of them were gone. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. after that particular performance, did you think, okay, maybe we have a shot here? Yeah, I did. I, I did. No, I, look, every year I went out to play with Claire, in the early years and latter years, I always thought we had a shot. I always thought we were capable of winning. Just I suppose under 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 Fitzy or I suppose after Fitzy came in and after all those good under twenty one and minors came in, you kind of knew you had the quality. You just knew, look, we need to just uh, just build on this, get our structures right, get our team right, get our shape right, and then we really have a chance of winning this. We should be expecting to win as opposed to hoping we can win. Um, but yeah, I suppose after that day against Galway, you definitely knew you had a shot, you know, and like that. I think once you get to a stage. And you go, look, there's only three teams left here against us. You know, we, we'll, we'll take our chances against any of them on any given day, regardless that we didn't have the experience of a final or semi-final before. Um, you know, and then you have all of the excitement from the county building. You have all of that to go with it. So you're kind of on a wave and it helps. And because it's our first shot out, I think personally, I, I felt, you know, very little pressure. Um, it was kind of almost a shot to nothing, which helped as well, as opposed to, you know, if you'd been there before, and you maybe lost a couple of semi-finals, and then you were up against a new team in Clare. There probably would have been a lot of pressure on another team. So we we kind of just used that as much as we could. Just kept training hard and kept everything kind of as lighthearted as we could, um, and just kind of went into it with that mindset. But you were captain. Who who else were the leaders in that dressing room and trying to keep away from the idea of you know building you know putting too much pressure on yourselves because that can be a sort of thing like you mentioned earlier in terms of like big speeches or whatever. You can have the game yeah. played before you ever yeah. go out in the field. Yeah, no, we we were good that way. I suppose the management team were good first of all. So you had you had you know you had you had Fitzy Kinnerk, you had Louis, you had Joe Connor. We'll say who are SNC who, who a huge amount revolved around, like you say, in terms of managing you know um, managing your your energy levels throughout the day. And and I suppose Joe would have designed them with with Fitzy and the management team. You know, when we eat, when we meet, how long our chats are, you know, what we do after our chats, our kind of free time, all that, and that that's important. And then. The players look. You could you could think of yourself the likes of Bugs, um, Colin Ryan, and but then the the younger lads, I suppose, that would have been there. Fergal Lynch, we were lucky, was around um, still at that time, an older an older guy that was more experienced. But you had Keen Dillon would have been a, a huge leader at that time. Even Dave McInerney was very young at the time, but he he would have been. It was more. We we probably weren't that kind of a rare rare team. Um, you know, there's a necessity for speeches every now and again, and and you'll 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 throw a few words in. But really, we just focused on the training levels the, the quality we could bring out of training um and you know getting that kind of an atmosphere i suppose of look if we just express yourself if you just play at your ability on the day we, we were we have a very good shot here because we have yeah, that you quality, were brilliant against limerick and I, t- I think limerick if 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 any team kind of froze on the day they missed so many scores especially at the start of the day or the, of the of the game but when you come to the finals then what sticks out to you when you think of the two finals I mean, for a neutral, you think of Anthony Nash's uh, unbelievable penalties, you think of the hat-trick. What comes to mind for you? Um... I suppose all, all of those, you can, you can, there's moments, I suppose, from a player's point of view, you kind of think of different things, you know. Um, 
I remember even thinking um, that I always kind of had a feeling that that we that we were going to win. I suppose maybe that maybe that's in hindsight, and that's not being kind of cocky or arrogant about it. Because again, we should we had no real reason to think we were going to be. But I think we were just on a very good wave that year. We had a lot of confidence. Um, I think little things. I suppose I think Colin was brilliant from the freeze, and I think people underestimate that maybe at times. Um, you know, we've nearly everything he touched for the two days went over, and that gave us a real, real, um, I suppose, confidence in that. Like you say, against Limerick the previous day, Declan Hannan missed a couple at the start. You know, a young guy, uh, you know, and a lot of things probably went wrong that day for Limerick. James Hickey got injured very early. You know, but it just shows if things aren't with you, you know, you need a huge amount of quality. And like if that had happened to us, you know, we would have been under pressure then, you know, if Colin had got injured or if, if one of our main lads had, had been having an off day, you know, John Conlon hadn't been as good under the ball, things like that. So it, it can fall away very quickly. But I just think we were, we were, we had the look of the gods that year. Nobody really got bad injuries. Um, you know, we had a fairly simple game plan and it was just about moving the ball quickly. Um, and things just worked out for us. You know, I think Podge played very well the first day. Um, Little things like that, little things like that. Donald Donovan was excellent, obviously, with the pint at the end. Things things happened that you couldn't have assumed would ever happen, you know. Like, Dunny would never have made a run like that for the ball at the end to score the pint. But I think it just shows you, if you if you kind of back what you're doing all year, if you're well prepared, if you have if you have good individual quality and good individual characters on the field, you'll get a chance. And, and, and luckily that day he put it over and that just kind of gave us the, the chance then to, to try and put it right. You know the those day. Anthony Nash penalties, he obviously saw that they were coming. He'd been doing them for, well, I remember definitely he did one in a qualifier yeah. in Thurles against Wexford the year yeah. before and nearly took the net out of its rigging. You know, you all had goalkeeper uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Hurleys, Hurleys in the net. Who planned Hurleys, that yeah. and uh, how many trees were knocked to make sure that happened? I, I, I don't know who planned it to be honest only other than the fact that we did it uh, during the week before training we just uh, um, it was after a training game or after the training session or whatever um, 8 or 10 of us stayed on after uh, the usual lads so I would have always been one of the lads in, in the line if there was a penalty or whatever and and uh, whoever else would have been there and these hurlies just appeared I presume Fitzy and Pat Kelly kind of had arranged it or had talked about it um, and we just tried to try to use them do you know but like look it, it didn't matter. There was no way we could replicate his power or the way he actually did it. It didn't matter. You know, we had we did it in training and a couple of lads, I don't know, was it McGrath maybe or 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 maybe even Colin himself did it, I don't know, and they tried to throw it up and hit it. But like Anthony Nash, the only thing you could hope for him with Anthony Nash is if he actually hits you. And then if he hits you, he could knock you out. So you don't you, you kinda don't really know what you want to do. I think if we had if you had twenty hurdies each even if it hit the hurley, it's still probably went to the net. The power he hit it with, anyway. You know, it was more, it was more kind of a try, I suppose, trying to do, trying to distract him almost, and trying to maybe make him think a bit more and have him place it a certain way. Um, but I don't even think he was thinking that way. I just think he just put his absolute body through the ball, and he didn't really know where it was going himself, other than that he was just going to hit it an unmerciful. How often way. is that run that you made for Shane O'Donnell's first goal uh, in the replay? How often is that brought up to you? It's a bit, I suppose. Yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, it, it, it's um, yeah. it is. I suppose it's kind of one of a lot of things. Do you know that kind of way? Things you small little things that kind of stand out in the game. Um, um, but it was weird. It was something we never really did. Again, it, it's one of those things when you look back in the year, you kind of think, God, things lined up for us here. I I didn't really make any of those runs uh, through the other part of the year. I would have been up and down the forwards, but I never really made those runs. But after the first day, we kind of noticed that. Um, they were going man to man, so we kind of knew the centre would be open. Um, so it was just said in training, in training games, if anyone gets a chance, take a chance, put your head down and go for it. The centre will more than likely open, and you'll either lay it off or you'll get a chance for a goal. And it actually happened one day in training, and the last one of the last training games we played, I it, nearly the same thing happened. Only I actually scored it myself in training, and it was weird and again that it actually happened like two minutes or five minutes into the All-Ireland that the first ball it broke I just went for it and look I wouldn't be I wouldn't be known for scoring goals uh, you know I was delighted Sads was there I got to pass it off to him he's 50 times better finisher than me but it just weirdly was one of those things that we kind of had practiced had talked about and it happened and you know even when I ran backwards from that in your head you're kind of going right we practiced that it just happened 
if everything else that we practiced or if everything else we talked about comes true, you know, we're on a winner here. So it gives you confidence, you know, and um, it just kind of helped us through the game, I think, you know. Have you watched back those games many times? I mean, they were unbelievable games. And just as you're talking there, I get a memory of, um, I can't remember who you either hooked or blocked or something like that near the end of the game, but you're kind of jumping up and punching and celebrating. Do you remember that? Tom, Tom Kenny, yeah, Tom Kenny. I did, and I, I don't really know why I did it other than but when I made my debut in 2006 I, I came on I remember Dalo telling me Tom Kenny at the time 2006 was like he was the, you know a god around the middle of the field like you basically couldn't mark him and I was a young lad in 2006 in my first championship game and it was about 15 minutes to go against Cork they are beating us this time and, and I remember Dalo saying I was I, I was one of the fittest and I'd be fairly fast so I remember him telling me the time go on and try and stick to Tom Kenny but like I hadn't it Cat's chance sticking Tom Kenny, you know, I wasn't at that stage of my career anyway. I was a young lad and he was like, yeah, he was, he was an unbelievable hurler, like animal fitness wise and uh, just gifted. And I, I don't know why, but when I, when I hooked him at, in 2013, that kind of came into my head that I was after that the first game I played, I kind of came on to him. And I don't know why, it's just weird things that would come into your head and would pop back into it. And that's why I kind of put my hurry up into the air because I only hooked him and it didn't really matter. Um, but, it's just weird the things that would pop into your head and would kind of come to you, uh, you know, and then you, I'm almost kind of had to say to myself here, forget about that now, you know, and watch what's going on in front of you. Do you, do you remember anything being particularly said at half time of, of either of those games or beforehand or like, was it just calmness in the dressing room? Because you sound like it was very cool. Yeah, we, yeah, we would, I, we would have been, I think, see, I think Fitzy was very cognizant that this was a young team and that you know, much and all as he would have been, you know, probably wound up and he, he would have been, um, you know, his style, his own style, I suppose, would be to build himself up and kind of get the most out of himself that way. But I think he was really, and the management team, to be fair, were all really cognizant that this was a young team. Um, the best thing for everyone to do here is to talk with clarity, to give clear instructions and to keep things on, a, on an even keel. Um, it was an all Ireland final for first land final for everybody essentially apart from underage or whatever um so there wasn't you know the pattern would have been the same at half time we would have split up into backs and forwards had a bit of a chat and then there would have been a couple of um kind of overview comments i suppose for the whole team and then that was it back out into the field but no there wouldn't have been anything um crazy said at half time to be honest which it was it was very very similar format it was kept i suppose all through the league and all through the championship and all through the years that they would have been there tweaked a little bit but it would have been um fairly similar but I think it was the only way to do it. It was the only way to do it with that group, you know, to keep it cool and calm. You know, there would be days when you might have been get the best out of yourself or even since, you know, and, and, and you need kind of something harsh to be said at half time. But, you know, we were going well. We were playing well. We conceded a few goals, fair enough, for a few silly points. But vast majority of things we were doing, we were doing well. So we just needed I, I to keep doing I presume the team would have got really close with each other around that time because you're men on a mission as such. Would you and Davy Fitz have been particularly close around this time or, or even before and since? Yeah, no, no, definitely not before anyway, no. And and not since either, to be honest with you. Like, we, we would have been, but like, you would have been close as you know, with the captain. So we probably would have talked a lot on the phone, you know, if... You know, he'd probably bounce something off me in terms of preparation like that, you know, when we were going to a game or what lads thought or what lads prefer to do. And I'd, I'd ring a few of the senior players then maybe and figure out that way what we taught ourselves. Um, he would, he'd ask you, he'd ask you during the game, you know, what would we think in terms of the formation, how we'd line up, what we would think, things like that. He would bounce it off you. But um, there wouldn't have been, there wouldn't have been, I suppose, uh, you know, a huge amount of closeness like that, you know, that kind of way. Um You'd be very loyal. I'd be very loyal to, to, to any manager I would have worked under. Um, you'd be very loyal to the players you worked with and played with. Um, but, you know, there doesn't necessarily have to be that friendliness there with everybody. Like, you know, that kind of way. We wouldn't be texting each other every day of the week. Uh, we wouldn't be, you know, calling around to each other's houses or anything like that. But at the same time, when you're in the trenches and when you're doing it together, you you would give Anton for each other. And you would, um, you, would you know, I, I suppose I was conscious when I went in as captain to almost... Um, to kind of give give of yourself to the team in a way and look you're either in it or you're not and when you're in it you you know you you try and get the most out of yourself you know you learn about all the other lads you make sure everybody is was in a good a mood as they can be you try and know as much as you can about all the players and and what their own circumstances are and i think i do think all of those things help fitzy would have been very good at that um and you know 
obviously then we had excellent coaches like Joe Connor and Paul Connor obviously since have gone on to, to show their, their real quality and for us to have him at that time um was was brilliant, you know, and you know, just it was real give us a real I suppose confidence in the setup as a whole. Wouldn't, do you remember that final whistle going or the the final few seconds before it went, knowing we're all Ireland champions? Yeah, I do. After Derek's goal that time, it was Derek's goal was was brilliant because you could just you could literally just kind of it was a bit of release, like just watching it, you know. Because you uh, before that, um, actually, you would have we kind of, you you would have been thinking, yeah, we're we're home and dry. But then Stephen Mylan got that that goal, and then you're like, look, hold on now, we could get caught here. So um, it kind of ebbed and flowed. But when Derek got that goal, he looked up the clock, and I think it was either over, it was nearly over, and you're like, look, there's no way they're coming back now for two goals anyway. Um, and it was nice. That was a nice bit now. And then because I was. I was sitting back a bit at that stage. I got to kind of see everything as it went on. Um, and you got to kind of enjoy it a little bit, you know. But, yeah, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Just, sure. Look, the stuff of dreams. I I, I was so lucky, like, so lucky as a, as a clear player to come in at the time I did, the year I did, with the people I did, the players I did, get an experience of the older generation, like I said, in 2006. I think I, I was very lucky, like, in my, my hurling career, what I got and... Just absolutely brilliant. Like, and absolutely. not too many get to do it. I mean, obviously, 120 odd have got, or 30 odd have got to do it over the years. Yeah. Like, what, yeah. what what is it like being the person who actually gets to lift that cup? Yeah, no, it, it's it's yeah, it is. It's 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 so special. And I suppose it's it's hard not to talk in cliches. It's hard not to kind of undersell it. But one of the best times was just. Um, getting to stand on the steps on your own and look out at everybody um when the when the president is beside you kind of saying a few words uh, before before you actually accept the cup I, that was a for me that was absolutely brilliant um you can kind of take it in and i know it, it's you'd be nervous and you'd be you know you'd be um but just to be able to experience those things was was out of this world you know and i would have grown up watching the 95 videos 97 i was at the games you know all those kind of traditional stories you would have grown up the thing is it would have given you the love for hurling and the love for Claire and the love for the jersey and all that and then being able to experience it was it was unbelievable literally unbelievable like I really got to live my dream as a young lad and to be able to say that like what, what more could you want uh, you know? not to not to dwell too much on sort of negative stuff but like yeah. it didn't really happen in the years after I suppose is, is a nice way of putting it but yeah. the, the following year I remember you yeah. played I think it was Claire, and I did a column maybe on the Monday, or sorry, you played against Limerick, and I think you might have lost that game. Um, but I wrote a column basically saying that Clare are in danger of killing the goose that laid the golden eggs or whatever. You know the way you'd had all this underage success, yeah. all these brilliant players coming through. Yeah. And I always wanted to ask you this. Davy Fitz rang me. It could have been, it could have been 2014 even, or, or 15 even. I can't remember exactly. But he rang me and said, uh, I'm after getting a call from Patrick Donnellan here. He's uh, he's not happy with a column you're after writing, you know, because I was basically saying, what's going on? Now, is that true? Uh, no, no, it definitely wasn't true anyway. No. I think I think anyone that know me now that wouldn't really be my style to uh well number one I wouldn't really care less what, what most people would have would have thought at the time like journalists have a job and uh no I definitely wouldn't be ringing fifty to ring you anyway. <laughs> well they'll fight their own battles. <laughs> yeah, well no, to be to be okay that way. I look sure more than anyone else, we knew we, we knew we weren't going well anyway, so there's no point giving out about that. The only thing I can control is uh try and yeah, try and play a bit better, but no, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done to be that, fair now, yeah, he was actually <laughs> <laughs> no, he was what very reasonable say, on the phone. He just uh, talked through about like how things hadn't been going well, and like to be honest, I don't, I'm not trying to break any confidence or whatever. And I and I hope yeah. that that even bringing up the call yeah, doesn't I, do that. But no, no, he he, he was he was like he was grand about it and reasoned, and it wasn't like he was giving out to me or anything like that. But uh, we just kind of talked it out, and it was grand, like it was yeah. fine. Yeah. But why didn't it happen in the years after? Because like obviously I I've kind of I've had Claire people on my back plenty of times for just saying yeah. the team never backed it up played on real stuff in thirteen but never actually backed it up. Yeah, really I don't know we don't know and we look we a lot of the, of the lads I suppose experienced at the time would have sat down and talked about this and said what are we doing right or wrong or what should we change and this and that but I don't think um we couldn't actually pick one thing if we could have we would have tried to fix it or we would have tried to change it or things like that I. I hundred percent think that one of the things we did was we over. I suppose we over, we overthought what we actually had to do the following year, and that's uh, like, you know, we had won the All Ireland, right? 
that didn't mean that we were going to win it again. It didn't mean that we were that we were ever going to even get there. But the following year, we all we needed to do was focus on the performance, focus on the things we'd done well, add a few new players to the panel, um, you know, train hard, all those kind of things. But I think I do think that we kind of got caught away with having with almost chase and being all Ireland champions again. Which number one, you know. Even if you're the best team in the country, there's no guarantee you're going to win the All Ireland. You know, you can get caught on a day, you can get a few fellas injured. It's huge when things have to fall in place to actually win it. And I think if we had just focused on, I know it's again it's a bit of a cliche, but you know the performance, getting better, um, figuring out what we needed to do as a team, um, rather than we were almost gritting our teeth every day we went out that we couldn't be beaten. Um, and I don't think that served us well as a younger team. You know, if we were an older team and we were battle hardened, we kind of could have taken on every battle. But as a younger team, I think that kind of went against us. Do you know, there would I, I, there would have been nothing wrong with us losing a few league games. You know, even losing the first round of championship or whatever, you wouldn't have planned for it. But there's time to recover and everything as long as your plan is right and as long as in the real, real heat of championship that your your performance level you need to be cha- playing at. And I just think for. After 13, I think we were kind of chasing something all the time. Um, now, again, easy to talk. At the time, I thought we were doing everything right, obviously. But 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 afterwards, in I suppose, retrospectively looking back on it, if we had just kind of maybe calmed down a little bit um, and and just kept doing what we were doing, focused on the performance, I think we probably would have been more consistent, which is, which is all we were really looking for, consistency. Because, you know, you can't guarantee you're going to win anything. But if you're consistent, you'll be there thereabouts. When people days. say that Davy Fitz has a certain shelf life, and you know he he was there with uh, Watford for I think it was three and a half seasons, yeah. obviously five seasons yeah. with G, and then now he's into a fourth season with Wexford. And after a couple of seasons, people thought, okay, this is going the wrong way. But he turned it around in 2019. Yeah. Like, what do you say yeah. to that when people say he has a shelf life? Well, look, the first thing is every manager has a shelf life. Like, what what, what manager is with a team? You know, Bar Cody, Bar Mickey Hart. You know, for 10, 20 years, Sean Boylan, like, I think the shelf life is, if a manager is good, players will want him, you know, if he's, but a lot of things have to go with that, I suppose, you know, there's, there'll be pressure on, on managers, there'll be pressure on coaches, there'll be pressure on players, if you're not winning every year, you know, you have to find something else, you have to change something, there's pressure on you, um, and I, I wouldn't say that Fitzy has a shelf life, but I, but I would say that he does, he trains you very hard, he trains you very hard, and he expects an awful lot of you, but, no more than I would have been expected of other managers, you know. Um, I think he just, he, he focuses on the little details, you know, he makes you think about it, you know, every day, nearly every minute. But again, from talking to some of the some of the Wexford guys uh, in the last couple of years, that, that's changed even since he was with Clare, you know. So he's, Fitzy is 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 a real modern manager. I think he's able to, to manoeuvre, he's able to change, he's, he's brought in new people. He'll change his own outlook. You know, he won't be shouting and roaring as much as he probably would have been when he was a young lad. Um, and he'll just make sure that he's doing what he can, whatever he can do to, to get the best out of that team. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say he's a shelf life, but like, you know, any manager that goes into a dressing room, unless he wins five all Irons in a row in the sixth year or the seventh year, you know, players will start falling out with him. The same as they would with any other manager that wouldn't be picking them or wouldn't like them or might drop them or things like that, you know. So um, it's not a given, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't kind of buy into that, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but he's going to manoeuvre around, you know. Look, he's, he's, he's hurling mad. He's going to go to different counties. He's going to go to different teams. And I, I'd have no problem with that. Look, we see it with most other other guys, you know, you've... You've, you've Matty Kenny in, in, in Dublin, you know, you've you've Liam Cattle down in Waterford, so you've other counties moving managers around the same and, and they won't be there so forever. So you've been very good with your time, but just one final question then. The cruise shit, of course, happened in 2016 and you retired at the more or less the start of 2017, if I have that right. How do you reflect overall in your Clare career? Do you think you got, I mean, by virtue of captain in the county to the All-Ireland, being the third Clare man ever, do you feel you got everything that you ever hoped to get out of it? Oh yeah, I did absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did. Look, sure, I would have, I would have liked to have, you know, played a bit longer. I would have liked to have played a bit better. I would have liked to have won a bit more. But, uh, you know, looking back in the history books in Clare, you know, for me to have played from two thousand and six to two thousand and seventeen, to have won an All Ireland and been captain at the same time, you know, what, what was the probability of that as a me as a young lad starting out? And, and to be able to actually do it was, was, was absolutely brilliant. Uh, like I said, I, I, I did literally 
you know, achieve my dream, which was to, to play and manage or play and captain Clare, I suppose, in All Ireland. So I, I achieved a, a lot personally. There'll always be regrets and there'll always be things where you would have said, God, we should have won that there. We should have played better. After 13, you know, there would be a little bit of a, I suppose, you'd be a bit of a sore spot that we kind of didn't at least, you know, back it up and maybe win a Munster, you know, or maybe maybe be a bit more consistent to get back to an All-Ireland final or, you know, because they're so hard won. Um, there would be a little bit of a grind maybe in that, but look, it's not something I would think about. It's not something I'd kill myself over. I I was under any complaints whatsoever with the with the time I had with Clare. I loved it. Loved playing with Clare. Loved um, the feel and every time I stepped out on the, on the field with Clare. Loved playing in that Clare jersey and uh, very, very lucky. Very lucky at the time I came. You know, like I was there in those years um, a couple of people that left, I suppose, kind of while I was there, you had, you know, Paddy Vaughan, Jerry Grady, Brian O'Connell, Dear McMahon, you know, all unbelievable servants to Clare who were really unlucky in the time that they came. They just missed out on that, you know, plus loads of others that I could name. But, you know, luck is luck is probably half the battle sometimes. And I was very lucky I was there and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll always try to. Thanks very that much. Way. You've been so good with your time and uh, I'm sure we'll chat again.